the vacancies throughout the NFL are systematically being filled one after another. The Texans will hire Lovey Smith as their next coach. Now, when we did this yesterday, we thought it was down to Brian Flores and Josh McCown. And my opinion was they can't hire Josh McCown. They won't hire Brian Flores. I thought Jonathan Gannon, the Eagles defensive coordinator, was the compromise candidate. A new compromise candidate emerged, and that, that was my first thought. Lovey Smith is the compromise. Love it. We, we, we want to hire McCown. Yeah. We can't do it. We probably should hire Brian Flores. We won't do it. Right. What else can we do? And it's like somebody pulled out the roster of coaches and yeah. said, hey, we could just make Lovey Smith the coach. Right. And I hate, I hate to make and it that simple. And he some box in some areas, right. too. Right, right. But, but I hate to make it that simple, but I feel like that's exactly what they did. It's really weird. I think, you know, I, uh, some people I've talked to that at least got a little knowledge of the situation, Mike, I don't think you're totally off here. That's where I was going to go with it. You know, from what I've heard a little bit, first off, they wanted to hire Josh McCown, period. That's the, you're, you're spot on. I have good information there to, to know that as well. That was, that was who they wanted. But for whatever reason, I think they thought they were going to be able to hire him and like get away with it and that sports media wouldn't go crazy. Why they thought that, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Right now, 2022, current environment in the NFL, hire a, a, white, a white head coach who's never coached. You know, of course, they backed themselves into a corner, I think, in that department. I bet you Nick Casario, being from New England, did like Brian Flores. But like you just said, it's opened up. Pandora's box of NFL dysfunction. Yes, she's in there. She's dysfunctional. Yes, yes. And I'm sure they didn't want to mess with that. And then, yeah, you go into, okay, what are we going to do here? And it, it does. It feels like, again, not to say that Lovey Smith isn't qualified for this job. I actually like the hire in a lot of areas and why it makes sense. But I also do think that it looks like they kind of chickened out on the McCown thing, knowing the backlash they were going to get. They didn't want to deal with the Flores lawsuit conversation and all that. So then they just went, oh, no, what else do we do next? And Lovey uh, was the next guy up. It does seem that way. I think without the Flores lawsuit, they definitely would have hired I would expect Josh that, too. Yep, because yeah. they were moving that way. They were testing the waters. I right. remember being told they're trying to get somebody to interview Josh McCown. Yes. The Jaguars just to justify talk to oh, Josh McCown. Talk we talked to him. It wasn't right. an interview. Right. We talked to him, and they were eventually going to do it. And on one hand, you look at it and say, hey, these teams can do whatever they want to do. You can hire whoever you want to hire. And I hear that all the time from people. You can do whatever you want to do. Well, right, but you still have to follow all applicable federal, state, and local laws. And when you are an owner of an NFL team, when you are one of the 32 stewards of NFL franchises, and there are only 32 of these jobs in the sports world, there are plenty of people who are qualified that are never going to get to be a head coach. Right. The idea that Josh McCown could go straight from the field with a year off of doing nothing right. and become a head coach is offensive to anyone who has put in the time, put in the effort, and positioned himself to be a head coach. And, you know, a point I made once it looked like it was real, it's like, is anybody suggesting Drew Brees as head coach of the Saints? Is anybody suggesting Phillip Rivers as coach of the Chargers last year when they were looking for a coach? It's ludicrous when you think of it that somebody who has 16 years of NFL playing experience, and he didn't play 16 years, he was on the bench for a lot of it, could waltz right through the door as a head coach, is incomprehensible, and they would have done it if Brian Flores hadn't filed the lawsuit. And Agreed. then once he files the lawsuit, and he has a whole section in there about how they mistreated David Culley, that's why I was convinced there's no way they're going to hire Brian Flores. Sure. So they had to find somebody, and they find Lovey Smith. Now, Lovey Smith took the Bears to the Super Bowl in 2006. He kind of got shoved out of Tampa when there they wanted to go keep behind Dirk the Cutter. Exactly. They wanted to keep Dirk, the offensive coordinator, who was possibly going to coach the Dolphins. Right. So they fire Lovey, promote Dirk Cutter. Lovey goes on to coach Illinois. He was 19 and 37 at Illinois, which is not something you want to lead your resume with. But that's his most recent experience as a head coach, and now third chance to be an NFL head coach. That doesn't happen anymore. The Norv Turner, Wade Phillips, third time isn't a charm, usually. This is the third time for Lovey Smith. Yeah, it's not a hire that's going to excite the Texans fan base. I mean, that's for sure. It's not. You know, again, you know, Lovey Smith, I, I will say this. Like, yeah, I don't get excited. I'm not like, wow. Do I think he does serve a good purpose here for the, the current state of the Houston Texans football team? Yes, I do. I mean, again, at, at the optics of it, they look a little dysfunctional right now. There's no other way around that. You know, I, I'm with you. Again, I know from good people that they really wanted to hire McCown. There's no doubt about that. You know, Lovey, at least, though, I'll say this. He does understand NFL game. 
You know, he's going to understand how to get everybody on the same page and at least stabilize the environment. That's where I can get behind it a little bit. I don't know if you feel me there at all with that or not. I don't disagree but, with that. You know, right? He's going to understand, like, hey, this is, this is the proper plan we need this week. You know, th- this makes sense for our offense. Okay, offense coordinator, I like what you're saying. Hey, let's not – let's worry about this. He's an overseer, right? Let alone he's going to be able to coach the defense and add some two cents there. So there has been plenty of good he's done in the NFL. You said it. The Tampa situation was a little weird. It definitely was. I don't think you can sit there and totally blame it all on Lovey Smith. But been to a Super Bowl, coach Super Bowl caliber defenses, and – uh, I, I, I understand it from that standpoint, but I don't think it's one that the Texans fans are going to go, oh, wow, this is awesome. We got our guy for the next 10 years. Two and a half years over under for Lovey Smith as coach of the Texans. Ooh. What are you taking? If you made me sit here right now, I'd probably go the under. I'd probably go it's one or two years. I, again, I don't love the optics of this whole thing. And, you know, again, there's just too many things at play here with the Houston Texans. You know, There's a stigma around the Texans organization right now in football, period. The perception, the reality, whatever you want to say, whether it seems like it's a little bit too religious with Jack Easterby and Nick Casario, people question that. And there's nothing wrong with being religious. Just does it have a place in overtaking your football organization? There's that aspect. We talked yesterday about there's certainly a stigma about that organization from African-American players throughout the league. There's no question about that. So Lovey Smith does help out in that department, but it is still at a very like base level uh, a little weird. Unless the players make. look at it and say, "You're just taking another black you're coach, yeah, you're, and you're gonna and you're gonna make him a short term guy, right, and, and he's in a position him. where he's not gonna succeed, right. and then you're gonna fire him, and you're eventually gonna hire Josh McCown." And now they're talking about making Josh McCown a member of the staff. I thought they were thinking about it last year, and apparently he didn't want to do it last year. I mean, right. I, if you want to position yourself to be a head coach, and look, I like Josh McCann. Yeah. And, and we've had this conversation, like, how is he allowing himself to be put in this position where people are like, w- w- what's going on here? I mean, he, he's a smart guy. It's crazy guy. that he's in it. It's but a smart, you take he's advantage a, of it if it's that's offered right. to you. Hey, yeah, you, you want to make a head coach? It, right? What the hell? I'll yeah, do it. What? I think you're crazy. I did, but, I'll, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. I mean, what's he supposed to do? But you're right. Like, the optics are weird, certainly, for what we're doing in the NFL right now. That's where I, I, I you know, I don't get that. And it seems like, yeah, the Texans weren't really sensitive to some of that stuff there. Uh, but none, no experience with some of the guys like you talked about. That we know there's other qualified people out there. We know there's other offensive coordinators out there that have a different skin color that are qualified. And for them not to get the job or seem to get the chances to McCown here for two years in a row is at the top of an organization's list. Yeah, seems a little crazy. It does. First question I would have for Lovey Smith at his introductory press conference. Yeah. You ready for it? Yeah. Tell me why you benched half your starters at halftime of the Week 17 game against the Saints. His name came up last week. Right. He's the one coach that was kind of caught red-handed tanking. Yeah. When the whole trying yeah. to lose to secure right. your James better draft Wilson is and all that. Why did right? you take yeah. half your starters out? Right. You know who the quarterback was that day for Lovey Smith? No. Oh. Josh McCown. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's amazing. <laughs> so, and he didn't get benched. Right. Which it's like, you know, wait, wait. Okay. Uh, Levante David. Okay. We, we want to lose this game. You sit out. Uh, yeah, uh, no, you sit out. Josh, we're good. Yeah. You stay. Yeah. <laughs> you stay, Josh. I love Josh. There, there was certainly, there's certainly a, a personal liking there as far as Lovey, I think, had a, uh, some affection for him when he was in Chicago at his end, end of his time there, right? I think he was solely responsible for McCown being down there in Tampa Bay. There was something there, which makes me do, I, I do wonder about, like, you brought it up a second ago, well, is this part of the future plan to get McCown now on the staff? I think he's eventually going to be the head coach. And you make him, okay, offensive coordinator, whatever, and you start to frame the conversation around, oh, you know, you, then we, we hear a report how everybody's so impressed with Josh McCown yep. sometime in the offseason and early on in the regular season. And, the, and you know, he, no, he is qualified to be a head coach. I, I wrote something today that I'm sure is going to anger some people in the media as if that's ever stopped me before. But my point is, and I had someone call me yesterday and raise this, and I hadn't really thought about it. So I may have been one of the ones playing checkers, too. Yeah. My point is Jack Easterby is playing chess while most of the media is playing checkers. That he is staying multiple moves ahead of and manipulating the coverage. And you saw it last night. I saw a certain high-profile insider at ESPN's Twitter feed saying, oh, they've been talking to Lovey Smith throughout the whole process. Well, then why was he one of the finalists? Right? Uh, they, 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 they think vaguely been brought up a few times over the last but two weeks, But once it's right? down to the final three, it's down to the I final know, three. I know. 
And and then also there was a, a tweet that the Texans do indeed believe that Josh McCown one day will be a great head coach. Yeah, for them. Yeah. Not for anybody else. Right. And he's got to get about the business of getting the credentials and putting in the work and learning how to properly do it. So it doesn't look ridiculous if and when. But look, this gets back to the structure of these teams. Cal McNair is going to do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Jack Easterby has put himself in a position where he is able to influence Cal McNair to do what Jack Easterby wants him to yeah. do. Last year, Nick Casario wasn't on the list of finalists from the outside consultant, Corn Ferry, the firm that they hired to find a GM. So what happens? Yeah. Easterby got it done. gets McNair and right. says all the right things, and they jump on the plane and they go get Casario because yeah. Easterby knew, I believe, that Casario wouldn't have run him out the door. No doubt. And he didn't. He's going to be part of my one team. Of these, one of these others? Right. One of these others come uh -oh, in? Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. That guy, gone. Right. Casario, we're on the same page. He's a friend. We have a working relationship, and we see life and work in the same kind of vein. Yes, I think you're exactly right with that. Uh, I, I don't disagree. And again, you know, even with the Josh McCown thing, again, I'm not... I, I really like Josh. I think he's got a lot of qualities to be a head coach as far as his ability to communicate, lead men, be a guy at the front. But you do need some experience. To me, the, 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 as long as he's been around in the NFL, that's still too drastic of a move you know, to just jump in there. And, and, and again, just because you were a good player doesn't always make you a good coach. Just because you didn't play doesn't mean you can't coach. I mean, Bill, Bill Belichick, I'm pretty sure, wasn't that great of a football player. He's, he's worked out okay in the, the coaching department. But, yes, the, I think, again, if they want to sell this with McCown, yeah, he's got to get in the door. He's got to – you think you know. I, I can say this from a little bit of experience because I saw both sides of it. You think you know what's going on to make the donuts behind the scenes, you know, a little bit when you're the quarterback. Because you are the quarterback. You get privy to more information than anybody else on the roster. But – until you're in a building on a day-to-day -day basis and you're part of the coaching staff, you don't realize the day-to-day -day intricacies and details and some of the things that you just took for granted about the information that was presented to you as a quarterback and realize, wait, you know, somebody's really dug this up. Chris Sims was back in a damn closet digging these plays out for like seven hours last night going through this to make sure this looked good for the quarterback or whatever else. And I think those are things you do need to know and experience to, to, to be a great head coach. And there's also a fundamental difference between being a member of staff and being the head coach. Definitely. And, and, right. and that's the projection that's the risk that every team takes when it makes a guy head coach for the first time. So at least for the Texans, they have a guy who's been a head coach in three different spots, yep. two in the NFL, one in college. But I, I, I really, I, I'm sorry. It seems it just it screams seems out pawnish. compromise candidate. That's what I mean. It seems like it's a pawn, and I don't love that. I don't. It bothers me. It really does, especially with what we're talking about. You already said it. Too many qualified coaches out there. And this just seems to me like it's some political play. And I, I don't mean that by from, from putting down Lovey Smith. It just I'm more about the Texans and what they're doing here. I do think there is some good here about Lovey being the, the, the head coach. I do think there is, like I talked about, he's going to get people on the same page. You heard me say a number of times last year, right? Like, he, he, he's still a good d defensive football coach. I know that, like, they're statistically weren't rated good. They were the 31st defense in football. Well, like, we talked about it a few times. You know, there's not tons of great talent there. And when, you're, when your defense is on the field every fourth play because your offense was three and out, three and out, you know, you're gonna, the dam's going to break. But I think if you look at some competitive parts of the football game before the defense got worn down, they do do some good things. He understands how to coach that side of the ball. So hopefully it works for him. I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him to be successful and screw up their whole manipulation plan for as far as the way it looks right now. And I still don't know if that'll save him. If all else fails, yeah. philosophical differences. Yeah, oh, yes, right. Always resort to He'd philosophical like to differences. win, and we don't <laughs> like that. So, I mean, I really think that's what happened with David Culley. I think things started to look a little too good. And they went, wait, this guy's a little more competitive and got a little bit better of a feel as a coach than we'd like here. Uh, we can't give him another year. He might actually get things turned around, and it's not the guy we want to get it turned around with. So I just, that's where it feels wrong, too. The beauty of all of this is if they knew – when they fired David Culley, what was going to happen with uh, the Josh McCown situation being derailed by the Brian Flores lawsuit, they would have just kept Culley, I think. Why not maybe, just keep Culley? Maybe. I wonder if at one point they called him the past few days and said, um, We're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> would, you, would you like we to come back? Really fire you. We're paying you anyway. <laughs> would you like to come back and work uh, for us uh, for another year? Just, but just one year. Yeah. Maybe two. Yeah, right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.